One of the challenges new WordPress users frequently have is understanding the difference between posts and pages. In fact, this is sometimes challenging for experienced WordPress users as well. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between posts and pages and show when you would use one or the other. So when you log into WordPress, you start at the dashboard and you're greeted with uh, the starting page. And then over on the left, you've got posts uh, and pages. And in between, you've got media and links, which are other types of content. But most of the content you're going to be creating in WordPress will be either a post or a page. And when you click on posts, you get a list of your posts. And when you click on pages, you see a list of your pages and they look very similar uh, at a kind of a high level until you actually dig in to uh, the posts or the pages. There are some key differences between the two formats. Posts are primarily date driven. Um, they will be by default when a post is displayed on a page, your posts will be displayed in descending date order. Um, they're organized with categories and tags. That is, when you create a post, you can put it into one or more categories and give it one or more tags. Uh, those category and tag assignments will be collected on an archive page. And there are several different kinds of archive pages. You might have a date archive, you might have a category archive or a tag archive. Uh, on those archive pages, you will see, always see a collection of posts that are relevant for the date period or the category or the tag that's selected. Uh, and posts also appear in your RSS feed. By contrast, pages are quite a bit different. They're not part of that date-driven post stream that you would see on an archive page uh, or your home page if it's a blog. Uh, when you see a list of posts that are organized in date descending order, you would never see a page mixed in with those. Pages are outside of that mode of organizing posts by dates. Uh, additionally, pages have no categories or tags, so you will never see a page listed on an archive page. So an archive page would list posts by category or tag or date. Uh, pages would never be a part of that. Pages can be organized hierarchically. So you might have a page that is the head of a section, uh, and then you might have some sub pages underneath that are related as child pages. Uh, this can be a very powerful way of organizing traditional web content if you're using WordPress as a content management system to manage like a corporate website or a business website that has a blog component but is mostly static content. Uh, in addition, Pages are also hidden from your RSS feed. So if you want your content to show up in the RSS feed, make sure you publish it as a post, not a page. Now, typically, here are some examples of when you would use posts, uh, blogs, news stories, status updates, basically anything that's time sensitive or date sensitive. Obviously, if you want it to appear as a new update for your readers who are following you by RSS, that has to be a post. Pages would be for, as I was saying, traditional web content. So an About Us page or a contact page. Uh, also for navigation pages. Pages can be very good starting points when you're building out the navigation of your website. Um, if it's a traditional website as opposed to a blog, you're going to be using pages for that sort of content. Uh, and anything requiring a hierarchical structure. So that's more of a traditional website structure where you might have a page for each department in your company, and then you might have sub pages for each division in your company. So just to pull this all together so you can see how this looks in real life, uh, let's take a look at this website. Um, this is uh, the blog page here. And if you scroll down, you see these are all of the recent posts uh, as of the recording of this video. And it's just sort of an endless stream of content uh, in date descending order. And these are all posts. And all of these posts are categorized and tagged as well. So in addition to showing up on this blog view, uh, I've got archive pages as well. So all of the posts tagged administrative are on this page in date descending order as well. And as well, there's a category archive. And these are all the posts tagged with uh, this particular category. And what you're seeing are posts, not pages. Pages would never show up on any of these archive views or date views. Uh, but what I have done is I've used 
pages for the top menu items, for most of the top menu items. Blog is a menu item that goes to a, to a blog archive, a post archive. Uh, everything else here goes to a static page. So the about page, the contact page, I've got a subscription form. These are all pages, but they're never going to show up uh, on any of the archive pages. They'll never be mixed in with posts. Uh, they serve an entirely different purpose. And of course, I would never want my email subscription form to show up in my RSS feed. Uh, so that's just a quick example of uh, when you would use posts and pages. Hopefully this has helped you sort out the difference between the two. And uh, you'll get a lot more detail on some of the things I've talked about in this video, particularly related to tags and categories uh, and the hierarchical structure of pages. Watch the individual videos related to creating posts and pages, and I'll explain those topics in more detail.